Learners, in this program, we would like to learn about the microscopic features of the basaltic rocks with case study from Deccan traps. The focus would be on mineralogy and textures displayed by volcanic rocks. Now, we will see these lava flows inside it. What these rocks display under the microscope, that is very important not by naked eyes, but we will see these lava flows with the eye of the microscope. See here, very fascinating picture here, very colorful minerals. The rock which you see on the surface is black, no interest. It is very monotonous, but you cut across, you make a thin section of these rocks and see under the microscope, beautiful colors here. And these colors are of different minerals. What are those minerals? I have made a line diagram here with my own drawing. You have agite. Agite is a silicate mineral, better known as one of the pyroxenes. Then plagioclase is also a silicate. You have black colored magnetite. Magnetite is also a mineral, it is an oxide, it is not a silicate. Then you have a glass, volcanic glass. These are different minerals, they display different colors. When you see under the polarized light, they display different colors. When you see under the cross nickel, the colors may change. When you rotate the stage of the microscope, these minerals they display variety of colors. The color may vary from light shades of gray in color to dark shades of yellow, brown, gray, green or purple colors. See how multicolored these rocks are. You may appreciate if you see these rocks with the help of a microscope. And they display variety of textures. Texture is also equally important as far as the mineral composition is concerned. Basically, you have clinopyroxene, you have clialsic plagioclase, you have magnetite, you have glass and lots of secondary minerals. Secondary minerals are formed after the formation of these rocks. Because of the weathering of these rocks, these rocks dissolved in water and later on precipitated in the open spaces or vesicles in the form of a secondary minerals. And these minerals are very common minerals like calcite. You may be familiar with calcite, silica, chlorophyte or zeolite. You may be familiar with zeolite. See here, the texture part I was saying is very significant and very important here. Lava flow display variety of textural features such as ferric. Ferric you means you have large size crystals and if you have a large size plagioclase crystals, we call it as plagioferric. If you have large size agite crystals, we call it as mafic ferric. So, these are the terms and they display a ophitic texture. Ophitic texture means you have a large size crystal. Inside this large size crystal, you have a smaller tiny size crystals are enclosed within this crystal. And this special type of texture is known as ophitic texture. Sometimes these leths or these crystals are partly enclosed sometimes they are partly outside of the crystal. We apply another term, call it as subophytic texture. Besides this, these rocks, they display variety of phenomena like twinning. Why these twin crystals have been formed? Because of the cooling. At the time of cooling, the crystal growth was so restricted that twinned crystals have been formed. Zoned crystals, Rhythmic zoning is also found. Rhythmic zoning within crystals, I will show you in my subsequent slide here, how colorful these minerals are. See here the clinopyroxene. Clinopyroxene is a mineral and this encloses, this is a big size crystal and we call it as tachoblast. This tachoblast encloses a smaller size crystals of plagioclase here. But here in another section here, these crystals are also large size clinopyroxene. The entire field of view is covered by one single mineral that is clinopyroxene. And inside that crystal you have plagioclase. 
plagioclase is also a silicate calcic silicate mineral. Again I am showing another slide here there are many phenomena taking place subsequent to the formation of these lava flows. These phenomena are like hydration or devitrification. Devitrification means as I said earlier these rocks do contain lot of glass and this glass when it undergoes change because the conditions physico chemical conditions are changing this glass develops glass is a amorphous substance and over the time period because of devitrification and hydration process this glass develops crystallinity and the process is known as devitrification. So, devitrification is seen here if you see carefully this thin section the pelagonite. Pelagonite is a mineral species which display a very radiating like crystals here these crystals are radiating here and these are all secondary minerals formed because of hydration and devitrification of original mineral. So, intersertal texture see here the when the magma is crystallizing what happens the crystals early formed crystals they form early formed crystals are pyroxene plagioclase after their crystallization there are certain spaces left in the system those spaces later on occupied by a glass and this glass is known as intersertal glass and the overall texture is known as intersertal texture. Another variety of texture call it cumulophilic texture these are all lava flows they each lava flow showing a variety of textures and each lava flow having its characteristic textural features and they can be identified they can be distinguished by these features. See here the mega plagioclase which shows this cumulophilic texture. Cumulophilic means so many phenocrysts they are clumped together they are clustered together at one place just like in rainy season so many things are floating in water and they are clubbed together. So, magma behaves like an aqueous system and in during their crystallization during their formation of these structures certain crystals they have been formed they club together and form cumulophilic textures here. What I have shown what textures I have shown those textures we can see under the polarizing microscope. But with the advancement when we use a scanning electron microscope or transmission electron microscope these textures show variety of features like see here these are the feather like textures feather of a bird they are very much similar to feather of a bird this is a magnetite mineral magnetite looks like a feather of the bird and here needle like ilmenite crystals you cannot see these things by under the microscope or by naked eyes, but they can be resolved by scanning electron microscope. So, see how it is a museum of variety of textures and minerals these minerals even if you see after texture these see these minerals they display variety of phenomena as I said earlier such as zoning. Zoning means you have rhythmic zoning layer after layer you have mineralogical change in the composition. The mineralogy in each layer is gradually changed and this zoning is of two types normal zoning and reverse zoning. Normal zoning means the rhythmic zoning is center to periphery is normal that means calcium rich to sodium rich from center to periphery. But in reverse zoning you have peripheral zones they are rich in calcium silicates the central part is poor in sodium content. Then compositional zoning core to rim sectoral zoning I will show you in the diagram then discontinues in the zoned structures are also here. So, you will appreciate this kind of zoning here this is a big plagioclase crystal here and this plagioclase crystal here this is more calcic in nature 
but when you analyze with micro probe the periphery is less calcic and more sodic in composition. But there are certain discontinuities in the zoned structures, here there are discontinuities. There are sectors when you rotate the microscope stage half of the sector becomes dark the other sector becomes illuminated and vice versa is taking place when you rotate the stage. So, this kind of zoning is known as sectoral zoning or better known as hourglass structure. Now, there are exolution phenomena they are taking place within these rocks and this exolution phenomena is taking place between pyroxenes, magnetite, ulvo spinel. Ulvo spinel is again an oxide solid solutions and alkali feldspar when crystallized in shortly cooled magma as homogeneous minerals form the melt and get exalt at sub solidus temperature into a stable coexisting crystalline phase. I will show you those things see here this is this cube shape is a magnetite crystal and this cube shape magnetite is surrounded by a glass. But this magnetite crystal over the time period when it was in the magma what happens? Part of this magnetite crystal was eaten away by the magma see here the eaten away bound. Later on it becomes triangular in shape rest of the portion is eaten away again the one part of the triangle is again eaten away by the magma, it is incorporated in the magma and finally, it gets exalt and these are the magnetite crystal is in the form of a small crystals here and the exalt mineral is ilminite, ilminite is a titanium oxide. So, exolution phenomena is taking place between two oxides magnetite and ilminite. So, the ilminite is replacing the magnetite here. You see very sharp pointed needle like tear like crystals here. They are not crystals, but they are opaques, they are the glasses, they are the glass shards. If you put a stone on the window glass, what will happen? These glass pieces will be broken up into small pieces. Similar mechanism is in the volcanism also, the glass naturally formed glass because of the volcanic activity it has broken down and shattered into small pieces. These are known as glass shard. So far I have discussed about the interesting part of the Deccan volcanism about its origin, various topographic and field features and how these rocks can be seen through the eyes of the microscope that I have already discussed before you. And you may appreciate how interesting, how colorful these rocks are. Now, let us summarize what we have learnt. We briefly learnt about essential and accessory mineral constituents of the basaltic rocks. We have also discussed the diverse textures displayed by volcanic rocks, such as ferric and aferric, ophitic and subophitic, intercertal cumuloferic, zoning and many more. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.